God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. We're showing up on a different page tonight. For some reason, my main Facebook page is not airing, but we're going to try to get this straight, Dr. Grace. And uh, I guess I'll forward it. We're having to uh, broadcast from the church's web page tonight. Welcome. Welcome to My Marriage University Live. We thank God for you as you're coming on. We want you to love, like, and share. Uh, like we do every Monday, and uh, you're in for a great discussion on tonight. We're going to follow up on uh, the last session that we had um, in, in talking about vision, your vision for the year, your vision for your marriage. Uh, so we're going to uh, definitely follow up on where we left off there. And uh, Dr. Grace, um, it, it was a really great discussion. We've been off for quite a while, uh, traveling and vacationing and different things like that. Uh, uh, but um, we want to welcome you all. You all start sharing and I will uh, try to get us on the other pages. Dr. Grace, as you kind of uh, welcome everybody in. Tell them about the marriage retreat coming up, the cruise. And I think this Saturday we're going to be in Hall River as well. So I'll let you talk while I try to get some of this together. Yes. Yeah, so we do have uh, marriage enrichment retreats sessions coming up we want to encourage you to go to mymarriageuniversity.com so you can uh, find out about what we're going to be doing where we're going to be uh, and get information on what's coming up in the marriage community and so we know that uh, we've got our cruise coming up and so that's our big event for the year uh, we want you to go ahead and a, a lot of couples have already responded to that we want you to get some more information there. You can certainly interact with us on a, my marriage page. If you've got any questions, you can uh, certainly post your questions to us and we will respond to you. But we're encouraging all couples, all married couples to be a part of our cruise to the Bahamas. And uh, so that's coming up the, towards the end of the year as well as we do have um, other places that we're going to be uh, fairly soon. So if you're in the area and you know that we're going to be there, we want to invite you to come and be a part of the My Marriage University Dialogue. Uh, I'm going to let you keep going, baby. I'm still trying to get the rest of this uh, uh, set up on the technical side. So uh, whatever you want to share tonight. So as you're coming on, we want you to um, love like and share let us know that you're uh tuned in on tonight and certainly um uh, post it on your page so that others will know what you're watching and they will be a part of the discussion itself so um, i know we've uh, had some questions about what are some things that you need to uh, talk about during your vision statement uh, we talked about the three-year plan we talked about the 10-year plan and we also, you know, mentioned the importance of, um, you know, coming together and setting goals for your marriage for the year. So um, those are some of the things um, we revisited, the needs of each couple, the husband and the wife. We talked about um, affection uh, being one, sexual fulfillment being another one, conversation being another need, recreational companionship, honesty and openness, uh, an attractive spouse, financial support, and domestic support. Um, so we don't know where you fall within those needs. What is your top, your first need or your top three needs? But uh, we do have, and then family commitment, that's an, another one, as well as admiration. There were 10 of the uh, needs that we discuss for um, for couples. So we want to thank you all for uh, joining in with us on tonight, and we hope to get a discussion going. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're sharing from a different uh, page, Dr. Grace, so our audience may not be used to us uh, streaming from our church page, but for some reason I couldn't get my main page, my home page, uh, to stream it. Uh, so we're coming tonight from the church page, and hopefully uh, uh, those of you that know folks, why don't you go ahead and share and let them know that we're on. Uh, I see Tammy is on and Charlene is on, and so I'm waiting on the rest of my regulars to come on in, but um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and share tonight. Um, 
and hopefully we can get more of you all on. The word will get out. If you all can hit those likes and shares and get the word out that Dr. Grace and I are on, we have a great discussion tonight on vision. Uh, we're going to be talking about the one-year plan or the seven Fs. Uh, Dr. Grace, we talked about the 10-year plan was the big vision. Then we talked about the three-year plan. That's uh, The three-year plan is known as what things can be like. It is, it is really setting a tone to get something going. But then the one year is something that you want to accomplish in the next year. And so I think that that is important. But you start with 10, you go down to three, and then you go down to one. And, each, and the way you do your vision that way is it kind of takes a big, giant vision and it breaks it down into small, manageable bites, Dr. Grace. Absolutely. And so, you know, again, you, you, know, you start with uh, just getting your thoughts out there. And then from your thoughts, they become goals. And from your goals, you turn it into a 10-year goal. Uh, that's the big vision, as Dr. Nichols said. And then uh, three years, what, you know, what's more manageable? What is something that you can accomplish uh, while you're moving towards your, your big vision? And that's really important. What we're going to talk about tonight is also extremely important because you've got to start somewhere. And so if you start with the year in, in mind, then at the end of the year, you can cast the vision for the next year, you know, leading up to the three years and do the same, uh, make it manageable uh, until you reach that, you know, bigger vision. We call this the seven Fs, Dr. Grace, because we're going to look at seven areas uh, as we get started. So you all uh, uh, go ahead and hit those shares and likes. I want to see you all coming in. I see uh, Robert on, Tammy on, Musselin on. Uh, uh, God bless you. Now, I don't think I'm getting very responsive. I see people coming on, but they're not showing up, Dr. Grace, in my feed. Uh, uh, so if you all can do me a favor and just hit those shares and hit those likes, and um, we'll go ahead and get started. But we want to have a great discussion on tonight. So everybody that's on, hello, Tammy. Hello, Charlene. Y'all, if y'all on, y'all holler at us. Let me see who's on. Somebody say something. Uh, uh, I want to make sure y'all on because we want you all to participate in our discussion. Uh, uh, so uh, I see a couple of likes, a couple of shares. Y'all ain't hitting it hard enough because we should get more people, even though I'm on uh, a, a, a different site, Dr. Grace, than what we're normally on. Uh, we still want to hit it and uh, get a lot of people out there. So we're going to be discussing seven areas of your life on tonight. So it's good to have you, Dr. Grace. It's good to have you all. Who else we got on? Uh, uh, Robert, uh, can you all let us know that you're on? I see some uh, 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 some some people on, but I don't see it showing up in my uh, comment section. So if you are on, can you all hit the comments? Robert reacted. Uh, uh, everybody that's on right now, can you say something real quick? I want to see if I can get your comments because I want you all to participate in the discussion tonight, but I want to make sure I can see your comments. So if you're on, just say something real quick. And Dr. Grace, as they're doing that, the seven areas uh, uh, that we always try to focus on in our one-year vision plan are? Our family, which is marriage and family. Our friends, faith, fitness, financial function, which includes career and church and fun. So that's why we call it the seven F's. And we're going to go into that a little bit. Welcome, Ashley. Uh, uh, thank you for hollering at us on tonight. And uh, uh, Rodney, God bless you, Rodney, man. Good to see you. Great to see you all on Sunday. And uh, uh, that's our newlywed couple, Dr. Grace, yeah. uh, uh, Rodney. Uh, 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 you know, that's a couple that we married uh, at the end of service. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that was good with him and Charlene. Uh, um, uh, and uh, so a great time. Who else we got? Marjorie. Welcome, Marjorie. Uh, uh, God bless you. Listen, let me tell you what Dr. Grace and I are going to do. We're going to have a discussion uh, uh, about how we would go about creating our vision plan for the first year. And I want you all to have that discussion with your mate, have it with yourself. Just think about these things. So it starts out by saying the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. By the way, if you want this vision plan, it's available free on our website at mymarriageuniversity.com. My, it's a very, it's, it's a, a very exhaustive vision plan, uh, uh, Dr. Grace. 
and um, uh, we make it available for free. Absolutely. Uh, we show you how to set a 10-year vision plan, a three-year vision plan, and a one-year vision plan. Yes. But we also take you through several steps, how to develop your meeting each other's needs, yes. uh, your love languages, and uh, talk about the importance. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. So that's why we go through that. Uh, <coughs> uh, so the the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So even though, Dr. Grace, sometimes in marriage, it seems like things are just so far away. I was just having a discussion uh, uh, earlier, and it seems like things can be just so distant. But you know what? It doesn't matter how far it's away as long as you take the first step. Absolutely. You got to make the step. You got to make the effort. You got to take the first step. Right. Uh, so, Dr. Grace? So, a few years ago, uh, we discovered a good plan to follow concerning setting the first year goals and the three month milestones called the seven F's. It looked at seven areas of your life <coughs> and all that start um, with the letter F family, friends, faith. Fitness, financial, function, and fun. So what we want, so what we're going to do here in our discussion with each other, and I'm going to ask you all to do it by posting on our website. Uh, um, I want to, uh, Grace, I want to go in reverse order today. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these seven areas, and I want you all to do the same. So I want you all to do the same. Take each of these seven areas, and based upon these seven areas, I want you to tell me what you want them to look like a year from now. So, Dr. Grace, we're going to start with fun. So uh, um, as we're talking, I need you all to holler back at us. So wh whoever you are, I need you to post what do you want to do for fun in the next year? So fun, Dr. Grace, uh, uh, and I keep calling you Dr. Grace, even though you're Grace and you're my baby and you're my wife. Uh, uh, but baby, fun would be like uh, uh, maybe you want to go to Hawaii or maybe you want to do something. We talked about going to Dubai or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what is it that 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 one fun thing over the next year that you want to accomplish. So this is just for fun. Uh, uh, so I need you all to post on the site while me and Dr. Grace are having our discussion. I want y'all to post and we're going to read some of yours out and see what y'all talking about. What is it? The one thing that you would like to maybe I bounced around, but we'll start with fun. So for fun, which could be vacations or whatever, what is it that you want to accomplish? Maybe you want to join a, a boxing league or maybe you want to join a tennis league or, or maybe. So that's what I mean when I say for the next year, what is it that you want to do? Think about what you like to do for fun. So that's the F. We're in, we're in reverse order, Dr. Grace. So baby, between now and this time next year, what's one or two fun things you would like to accomplish? I'm going to write them down. So this is we're, we're putting our vision together. Dr. Grace, I'm all ears. So, um, you know, when I think about things that we can do, I mean, uh, breaks that we can uh, take. Um, uh, just thinking about some of the things that we've talked about. Um, Hawaii was one, even though it's a, a long trip. Um, I don't like Hawaii, but she, I'm putting it down. You know, um, Dubai is a place with now. That's what I really want before. to try. I've actually started exploring it. I'm not saying we're gonna go this year, but by putting it down as a plan, that gives me a whole year to plan for it. And so, if I start planning now and I say that it costs three thousand dollars, then I can break that down and say, well, that means that I got to come up with. Uh, uh, a little over uh, um, a few hundred dollars every month, okay. and then I'll have my money. But go ahead, Dr. Grace. So, so we got Dubai. I don't know how to spell Dubai. You know how to spell it? Yes, D-U-B-A-I. Yes, okay. Fun. Um, and it doesn't have to be travel. It could be anything. Right. Um, you yeah, know, something, well. And preferably with your mate, okay, because we are doing a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't talking about what you want to do by yourself. Uh, let me see what y'all been responding. Have y'all been saying anything for fun here? Uh, we got here, uh, somebody say vacation, Jamaica, um, uh, November in Vegas, July traveling this year. Go to Germany. That's interesting. See where my husband was born and lived for most of his childhood. That's awesome, Tammy. A skiing trip to the mountains. 
Uh, I've been to Vegas about eight times, but Rodney has never been and would like to go. Me and Dr. Grace have been about 25 times. We absolutely positively love it. Uh, but Dr. Grace, so I'm not going to put Vegas down here, even though I know we're going. But uh, give me something else that you would like to do for fun. And uh, everybody else, I want y'all to just post. What is it and, and uh, that you would like to accomplish over the next year that's for fun? Baby, yeah, what else? So, I mean, uh, another place. Um, She's still saying places. I said it don't have to be place, but go ahead and give me your place. Right. Um, well, in addition to, I'll let you give some then. Well, you're going to ask me another question. I'm asking you the fun question, so you're going to ask me a question. Okay. Um, some of the things that we could do is um, there are a lot of beaches that we could explore. Um, you know, that's you know, something that's... Explore you know, beaches. I got three. And um, we've talked about going to Europe. That's one. But Dubai um, don't count as Europe. I think Dubai, well, Dubai is, that may be in Africa, but Europe, Africa, anytime it's over right. three hours, it's going out um, of the area. You know, France, Paris, I mean, all of that come together uh, for the Europe. So, yeah, just going places that we we don't normally go so you can be a part of different cultures. And So now I'm going to challenge you. So I, I didn't say that three or four times. So now I'm going to say, tell me something for fun that has nothing to do with travel. Something that you would like to do for fun that has nothing to do with travel. As we're doing it, I need y'all to do it too. So I'm looking at y'all discussions, but I'm asking my wife. So we're doing it just like we want you all to do it, baby. Um, well, yeah. Look at this. Take couples dancing lessons or cooking classes. Christmas cruise, San Francisco, and uh, anybody else, baby? Fun, 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 fun. You don't want to have no fun? Yeah, I mean... Well, what's fun? <laughs> I guess my wife don't like to have fun. <laughs> she can't think of one thing that would be fun to do. Well, I mean, there are a lot of different things. I ain't talking about a lot. I'm talking about one. That we could do for fun. Um, I guess one would be um, swimming. I mean, you already know how to swim. Yes. My wife needs to learn how to swim, and she needs to learn how to ride a bike. I don't know if she considered those fun. No, the bike wouldn't be fun. But swimming, yes, it would, because be... we could go biking. We bought bikes for each other three years ago, and we never rode them. That could be fun, so you can write it down. That's... What's that? Biking and swimming? Yeah. yeah. Could be fun. How do you spell biking? B-Y-C-K. I don't know how to spell bike, baby. B-I-K-I-N-G. That ain't right. B-I-K-I-N-G. Biking and swimming. Yep. All right. Uh, so that's the first F. Let me see if anybody else had any Fs. Uh, anybody else? White water rafting. We've done that. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody just say blessed. They just want to be have be blessed for fun. <laughs> God bless you, Antonio. Uh, uh, so the idea of that is to the Bible says what, baby? Write the vision yes. and make it plain. So you can have all these things in your mind or in your heart, but if you don't really write them down, then you never go to the next level of developing a plan to accomplish them. And so you just sit around miserable all the time, sit around frustrated, sit around uh, uh, disappointed with life because you never wrote a vision. And when the, because you didn't write a vision, you didn't make a plan. Write the vision, make it plain. You never develop a plan to get there. All right, so let's go to... Uh, um, so we're on number seven. I'm going to skip around, and I need y'all to help me with this. We're going to do two or three tonight, and then maybe you all can finish this up on your own. But this is how it would work. Uh, Dr. Grace, tell me about where you want your faith to be a year from now. So when we look at faith, so we're on number three now. So I'm going to my little chart, and I'm going to do the same thing. Or Grace, if you want me, I'll answer mine first, and you can answer it too. So faith. Faith would mean your walk with the Lord. So I'm not talking about church work. That's under function. So function would be like, Dr. Grace, you want to start this type of ministry. That's function. Like I'm a pastor. So if I wanted my church to do this or, or that, that's function. We're not talking about function. We're not talking about work in church. We're talking about relationship with God. So I want you and, and, and it's important that you put it in terms of that's quantifiable. Don't just say, I want to be deeper with God. Well, I don't even know what that means. 
Uh, uh, so I need you to say terms that you can actually do things that will quantify it, uh, uh, Dr. Grace. So if you think about the terms of faith, um, what would you like, to, where would you like to see yourself in your walk with God a year from now? And I'm going to give you uh, a, a couple for me. So a year from now, I would like to um, sp um, uh, develop a stronger prayer life. And now we're going to show you how to break that down later, but I'm just going to put uh, increase my prayer life. Now, the reason why that's quantifiable is because we can define it. We can say like, for example, like right now, my prayer life for the most part consists of, I do two major prayers a year, uh, two uh, what we call corporate prayers, a 21 day prayer at the beginning of the year and a 31 day prayer, uh, Dr. Grace, um, at, at New Beginnings in August. Yeah. And then of course, you know, I pray when I'm at service um, so those things are part. So if I want to increase it, then the idea would be, well, how do you want to increase that? So we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's something. So I came up with one. So Dr. Grace, give me one. When it comes to your faith in God, tell me something that you would like to see, or where would you like to see that increase, improved or whatever a year from now? Well, the one thing that I've had a desire to do is to, um, study uh, more women in the Bible. Um, so, you know, we're familiar with uh, Ruth and Naomi. We're f familiar with, um, you know, some of the, the, the more popular women in the Bible. But, to you know, I believe that the women in the Bible um, can apply to everyday life and circumstances. And so, um, you know, we hear about Esther and, um, you know, some of the, the more popular ones. But that's what I want to do is to do a deeper study uh, and to possibly even do a women's, you know, fellowship where it doesn't have to be like get together, but um, a, a luncheon fellowship or something like that, where we're actually discussing the women and how it applies to us and things that we can do as a takeaway uh, for, you know, that we can learn from when it, you know, when we look at some of the women in the Bible and then some of the things that they did that is not. Uh, conducive to a closer walk. So you know the pros and the cons, the things that are going to help you to go deeper in God and the things that are going to um, take you away from that deeper relationship with the Lord. So that was interesting because, and, and while we're talking, I want you all to tell us. So I need y'all to post down. When it comes to your faith in God, I need y'all to write some things. Where do you want to see improvement or increases or quantity in your walk with the Lord a year from now? Where do you want to be? I want to have a stronger relationship with God. Uh, I want to increase my study life, my prayer life. I want you all to post that now. Tell us where you want your faith to be. And uh, so Dr. Grace said something that was interesting. She said, first of all, to study more women in the Bible. So we can actually quantify that. So for example, uh, um, she can literally say something like, I want to learn about uh, uh, 12 women in the Bible. Okay. So then the way she would quantify that is real simple. Learn three per month. Learn one per month. So she could focus on Ruth next month. She can focus on Esther the following month. She can focus on Mary. You see how you do that? And then uh, uh, later on in the document, it, it, you actually hold yourself accountable by saying, did you do what you said you were going to do? So by the time we get to the end of the first quarter, she should have studied three women. So when I'm mentoring people, I would actually hold them accountable to say, OK, you said you want to study 12 women of the Bible. We're in the first quarter. How many have you studied? So that's the way we would quantify that. And so the way we're doing it is we're improving it. So you all tell me uh, increase in faith. Tammy says, I want to be more effective in fasting and be more obedient to the voice of God. That's a very good point. And so now you need to, we need to eventually quantify how do you become more obedient? How do you increase your, 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 your fasting? But that's the thing is to start writing it out, baby. Yes, absolutely. And so, um, again, 
going to the next one? Uh, before we go into the next one, I want to hear from some of you all. Thank you, Tammy, for sharing that. Anybody else? Y'all share with us, uh, uh, because we want this to be an interactive discussion. Where would you want your faith walk to be a year from now? You, here's where I'm at today. Next year, this same time, I want to be here. Uh, so whether it's my prayer life, Dr. Grace mentioned learning more about women in the Bible. Tammy mentioned, uh, uh, what did Tammy say, baby? Um, she said she wanted to be more obedient to the voice of God. Uh, she wanted to be more effective in her fasting. We got a few more. Increase my knowledge of the Old Testament stories. So that's very quantifiable. Okay, you can literally set a vision to say, uh, uh, and, and, and you, we want you to quantify it because now you have to go back and measure it. So we don't want to just say, like, these here are generic, but then I want you to eventually go back and put a number next to it. Yeah. Like, I want to learn 20 stories or 50 stories. Uh, uh, here is uh, Robert, increase my knowledge of the Old Testament stories. Very good. Ashley said, trusting in the Lord in all situations instead of questioning and having fear. So now we got to figure out how does she judge whether or not she's actually doing that. Okay. And it could be doing a study on trust. Uh, uh, it could be um, when situations come up, what does she do? Have you created friends that you can touch and agree with? Uh, Nate, uh, Shawanda says, I agree with Dr. Grace. I would love to learn more about women in the Bible. So these are great things concerning your faith. Rodney says, when in situations or moments of weakness, I want to know more scriptures to help me through them. So what I would challenge Rodney to do, uh, Dr. Grace, is not just read the Bible, but actually develop a, a, uh, uh, a study where he's beginning to memorize scriptures, perhaps even develop a journal based upon uh, uh, different areas of weakness or situations. And so, and, and by the way, Rodney, uh, uh, a key point, go to a Christian bookstore. They may have them on the internet, but go to a Christian bookstore and they have different, what I call first lady books uh, uh, that will be uh, outlined and give you scriptures based upon key words. So if you look up faith, it'll give you 10 scriptures on faith. If you look up uh, um, uh, anger, it'll give you 10 scriptures on anger. So you can literally go to the bookstore and find books like that. But with the Internet, you may just be able to Google yeah. like 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 Brother Rodney. You can literally say you can go to Google and say scriptures on uh, fear. Scriptures on uh, uh, anger or bitterness. And then make a note, study those scriptures, put them in a journal, and then have them available to you. Maybe if you have an I, uh, uh, iPhone like me, put them on your iPhone so that when it comes up, you don't got to go look for a journal. You just go to your iPhone because, see, my memory is going bad, so I put everything on my phone. I got like over a thousand different notes, and I can just quickly, quickly search what I'm looking for, Dr. Grace. And it's right there. Yes. But these are good things uh, uh, to handle. So, Grace, you pick one. We've done fun. We've done faith. Let's do uh, uh, a couple more. All right. Uh, fitness. Fitness. Well, see, now, Grace should have actually chose fitness two years ago when both of us were about 20 to 30 pounds heavier because we did a great job. My wife, uh, well, baby, first we tried um uh, so we made a decision that we wanted to get more healthier and lose weight, correct? Yes. And so we both uh, joined the gym. We, we ran our behinds off for three months. Uh, uh, I lost a half a pound. I was like, well, that plan didn't work. We still at the gym, but we know that going to the gym is not the key to losing weight. Mm -hmm. So my wife is a very diligent person. So tell us what you did, Dr. Grace, and why we, why we get all this weight off of us. Oh, I mean, I, I had um, determined that I was going to make fitness a, a lifestyle. So even though we've lost a lot of weight and we're maintaining uh, and we're still going to the fitness center, um, I still want to continue down that journey because, I mean, fitness... Well, before you go into the continue part, tell us, tell everybody what me and you did two years um, ago to initially, because we tried the gym and we didn't lose any weight. Right. So and you kept researching. You found something that caused both of us to lose between 20 and 30 pounds. Yeah, so we did a, 
a program, a 2030 program. And uh, it really took us through. And the, 20 pro, the 2030 program says lose 20 pounds in 30 days. Yeah. And it actually worked. It did. It was called the keto, ketogenic, ketogenic diet. Yeah. But go ahead. And so, you know, it, it looked at the total body and you know, the hormone levels and um, how we need to maintain the levels and foods that we're supposed to avoid and foods that were uh, good for us. And so we went down. A, it was a process, a process first of learning and then a process of eliminating and then a process of adding back the things that were good for our body. And then a process of maintain. Listen to your body. So it's maintaining. And so we've been doing well maintaining but i still want to um, when i say fitness i want to add things that i do because i can get bored with you know doing certain things for a long period of time like if i'm on the stair master or i'm on the elliptical i get bored with that so i bring a book um i listen to a book i read a book or i do other things to get through that 45 minute or that hour but at the same time i mean there are other things in the gym that you could do like today um, I did something different, which was, um, you know, I got in the pool, you know, and uh, while they were teaching lessons and stuff, and there you know classes and things that you can take. So there are different things that you could do that burns calories, uh, keep you interested, and keep you um, keep that lifestyle going for you. So you all, where do you want to be with your fitness a year from now? It could be terms like like I want to lose twenty pounds, absolutely, or it could be I want to run. Uh, uh, a 5k yep. uh, I want to run a marathon or a half marathon just set a goal of where you want to be a year from now I want to uh, uh, stop eating fried food or whatever the case now that you got to do all of that initially uh, Robert said he wants to get back into the gym three days a week mm -hmm. uh, so what I want you all to do is to define where you want to be a year from now with your fitness now, uh, uh, the one thing that the reason why this is so good for us, Dr. Grace, is because we actually developed a lifestyle of eating. Yeah. So there are certain things that we don't eat anymore. And what we learned by going through this training is that the key to losing weight is not about how much you exercise and it's not about starving yourself. What we learned, Dr. Grace, was, as a matter of fact, they wanted me to eat more. Because I was only eating one meal a day, but they wanted me to eat three meals a day plus snacks in between. And it wasn't, it wasn't about not eating. It was about eating the right things. Mm -hmm. So you wasn't really hungry per se, uh, even though it took you a little while for your body to get used to the different foods. But we stopped eating fried foods mm -hmm. and, and, and then we introduced other foods to our diet and uh, Grace kept going. So now she is a, what kind of person? Pescatarian. Pescatarian. I don't even know what that means. It sounds like a prospectarian. Uh, I don't do any meats. No um, dairy. No, um, yeah, there are a lot of things that I have that, Yeah, that's, that's the devil. Mm -hmm. that, that's the devil. I, I'm going to eat my meat. Like yesterday we went out, I had me a surfing turf, I had me a steak and some shrimp. I feel sorry for her, but I ate my meat though. And I'm still in good shape. So I understand God told me to pray for that meat. That meat is good. That meat is anointed. That meat is holy. That steak is all right with me. Uh, uh, but uh, Dr. Grace, you are so, uh, uh, um, uh, so it's not a vegetarian and, uh, and it's not a vegan. No. It's a pescatarian. I ain't never heard of that before. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it Bless again, her heart. pescatarian. Absolutely. Sound like a presbyterian to me. <laughs> Sound like she's trying to get saved. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it's it's really a good diet because <clears throat> I know what my body needs and, you know, I find when I give my body what it needs, it functions the way it's supposed to function. So, this works for me. When I try to add some of those things back, then it it, you know, my body reacts to it. So, it's best that I stay away from that. Well, bless her heart. Now, let's do one more, and I'm going to choose this one, family. So where do you want your family to be a year from now? So in some of my mentoring, like I had a young man, and he didn't have a good relationship with his children. He didn't have a good relationship with his son. As a matter of fact, they'd had a actually uh, a bad break, uh, got into a physical altercation, and they were no longer talking. And, um, and uh, he felt 
uh, what do you call it, first lady. Um, he felt like he was the father and it was up to the son to come back to him and so on and so forth. And he had been disrespected. And, and you know what? In my mentoring, I first of all said, well, where do you want that relationship to be a year from now? And then I set out a series of things for him to do over the course of the next year, uh, regardless of what the son did. And I'm not even saying it was going to work. But my point is, by setting a vision and putting a course uh, of, of work into action, it could work. Uh, but not setting a vision and doing nothing, you know it wasn't going to work. Right. So we, we developed a plan of, you know, sending a text, hey, just checking on you, see how you're doing, uh, uh, showing up to uh, something that the son was doing. You know, whether or not the son responded or not was irrelevant. It was what he could do to try to make the relationship better. Uh, so, um, Dr. Grace, if you had to think about family, uh, where would you like to see your family a year from now? So you got your husband and you got your two children. Um, well, uh, you know, I've always been a family person. Um, and then you got your extended family, too. You got your family in Florida. I got my family in Michigan and other family in Virginia. And yeah. uh, you got, yeah, I think basically about all of your families in Florida now. Right. So, you know, just, uh, again, more intentional um, gatherings, um, you know, being uh, more connected. Because, you know, again, uh, working and uh, church life and all of that, sometimes we just get busy. So one of the things that we implemented, now it still ain't perfect, but one of the things we implemented was at least uh, uh, a family gathering at church and dinner once a month. Uh, so what we did was we, we sat down with our children and said, hey, we would like to get together because, you know, kids, they grow up. We're empty nesters now. And my son is ripping and running, running all over the country doing his work. My daughter's down in Charlotte. So what we did was we literally set them down and said we would like for you all to gather. We would like to gather as a family once a month. We've done it a couple of times. Other times they're still busy. But my point is we were able to put a stake in the ground, put a plan in the ground, and try to implement it. Now, when it comes to family, you can't make another person do anything. But we at least made the effort of doing that. And every month we, we check back in. They may make it, they may not, but it's different than perhaps Dr. Grace, what we had did the previous four years, which was very little. Right. So yeah, that's, you know, the, that's one of the things that you can probably talk about some other things that you um, you know, one of the things that I, I, I've set out to do is in, 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 in improving my marriage is to, uh, with my relationship with my wife, is literally uh, taking time to go through uh, some of the things that we've written about, especially as we've gotten into this new stage of empty nesters and uh, whether it is, uh, uh, and, and some things we've already implemented, but continuing that, like vacations. Uh, I plan uh, uh, several vacations a year uh, uh, with my wife. Uh, we just came off of one at the beginning of the year. I got another one scheduled uh, during our anniversary in April. Of course, we got the marriage retreat that we're going to take a cruise in August. Uh, we usually go to Chicago around the time I go see my father. Uh, and then generally my wife wants to go to Florida at some point. Um, so that's a part of it. It's not all of it, but it's a part of it. And uh, just having these discussions, spending time with you all is, is therapy even for us. So, uh, and, and to those of you that come on religiously every week to, to join me in Dr. Grace, that can be part of it. Those of you that go on our retreats and do those events, that can be part of your plan to work on your marriage or your family or your children or whatever the case may be. But uh, uh, he, he that fails to plan, plans to fail. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, again, we've shared some great information with you today 
about some things that you can do in, in the areas. There's some areas that we have not covered, um, but you can go back with your spouse and talk about it. Um, you know, get some of those ideas out of your head and on paper or, you know, talk about it and help your spouse too, you know, help them accomplish uh, that, that goal. I mean, you can be a part of cheering them on, motivating them, encouraging them, you know, and helping them to achieve those goals. And here's why this is good. Like I look at Robert, he says, spend more time with my family in New Jersey, see them four or five times a year. So what that means is that over the course of a year, don't just wait for it to accidentally hand happen. Yes. Go ahead and plan it. Plan a trip. Okay, well, I'm going to go for the 4th of July. I'm going to go for Thanksgiving. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to go for uh, one of my grandchildren are graduating. So set those in motion and plan those. Here's another one. Continue to build a relationship with my father and communicate with my family in Ohio more. Again, schedule it. Plan it. Uh, uh, because with all of these things, someone says, I have one daughter in New Jersey, another in Texas. Rodney has one daughter in Maryland and two sons in Greenville. It is my desire to get all the children together at least once a year. So plan that trip and let them know what you want to do. And y'all work towards that goal. Now, everybody may not show up. Everything may not happen. I would like my grandmother to become more dependent on her more dependent on our children in, instead of me. I would like to also develop a family night with my daughters and my spouse along with my husband. So these are great things, Dr. Grace. So now, how do we do this? The last part of your vision plan is you take that one-year goal and you divide it up into one-quarter chunks. That means that I want to accomplish something over the next three months. So uh, in some of the cases here, Robert said four or five trips to his family, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that he needs to plan. He can, he can literally plan one trip every three months. That's four trips, once a quarter. So first quarter, I'm going to do this. Second quarter, I'm going to do that. Third quarter, I'm going to do this. Fourth quarter, I'm going to do that. Uh, um uh, in the case of one thing, like Charlene mentioned something about having all the family get together. So she can plan that a year from now and then develop a plan that this is what I want to do the first quarter. I'm going to mention to everybody. Second quarter, I'm going to do something else. So every time and then you can then what I do is after you set goals for the quarter, then you monitor it every month. What are you working? What are you doing this month to get your first quarter goals? What are you doing this month? Because I meet with my mentors every uh, uh, every month, Dr. Grace, and we go over where they are, what percentage of it has been completed. So earlier we talked about uh, uh, having fun, Dr. Grace, and uh, maybe we can't do all of these, but let's say that we choose Dubai. Then, uh, so by, by this time next year, we want to have gone to Dubai. Well, what is Dubai going to cost? So the first thing to do would be to look up the airfares, Look up the travel, look up, maybe do we want to go with a travel agency? Do we want to plan it ourselves to get the cost down? So maybe that's what we do the first month. Uh, by the first quarter, we want to know as much as we can about this trip. Second and third quarter, we want to begin to save our money up for it. Because now we know how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost $3,000, $3,000 over um, uh, uh, 10 months. Uh, what's three divided by 10? I'm going to put my calculator out because I'm a little slow. So if I take $3,000 and I divide that by 10 months or nine months or whatever, it comes out to be $300 a month. So all that says is, Dr. Grace, if we get paid twice a month, we need to take $150 and put it in a special Dubai account. Absolutely. Okay. So we can get our $3,000. Yes. And it's, it's literally, that's how you take a vision and make it come to pass. Write the vision and make it plain. So that he that runneth may see it. That means that even though we get busy, we still got that vision and we're going to still work at it. So those are the types of things that a good vision can do for you and for your home and for your marriage. So we want to encourage you all uh, to, if you don't have our vision plan, it's at MyMarriageUniversity.com. Uh, you go to the store section and you will see, uh, I'm going to make sure it's there, Dr. Grace, because a lot of people be working on my website. 
but uh, there it is. It's, it costs zero dollars. So you get it for free uh, and just go through the whole thing. Uh, do your 10 year, your three year, your one year, your seven Fs, your uh, uh, every quarter. And uh, I would encourage Dr. Grace people to have somebody in their life that they can be accountable to. Uh, me and you was having a discussion the other day and we was talking about who we meet with, you know, not just me and you ourselves, but who I'm accountable to, who I can talk with and see if you can develop that type of person. They'll hold you accountable to doing what you said you were going to do. So it's one thing to write it and to say it, but are you being accountable? Are you doing what you said you were going to do? And do you have somebody that will check you and check in with you and keep you on point to doing what you promised you would do? Because that's very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have fun um, with, you know, developing the goals and um, use the tools that we've given you as a guideline. And um, like, you know, I said before, um, be excited. Be your uh, spouse's cheerleader and uh, allow, you know, their accomplishments to be something that you just have fun with and you celebrate. Just like we celebrate anniversaries and we celebrate birthdays, uh, celebrate your accomplishments as well so that that gives you something to look forward to. So thank you all for joining us. We're going to close with prayer. If you'd like to make a donation to uh, our ministry, go to mymarriageuniversity.com. Uh, and if you go to My Marriage University, just click that donate button. Uh, we'd love for you to help sow into what we're doing. Dr. Grace and I got some great plans and uh, we would uh, uh, encourage you all, even though we've reached our, our first deadline for the marriage retreat, um, we, we can still get access to a few more um, cabins if you're interested in going on the retreat. Um, and uh, we can set it up where you can make payments on You have till August. Uh, uh, so the retreat is in August. If you're interested in going on a marriage retreat with Dr. Grace and I, we're going to have a ball. Go to mymarriageuniversity.com and click on the link and uh, you will get some information on it. Dr. Grace and I would love for you to come and join us. Uh, once you register, all you, you, all you need to do is put down $50 per person, and then you can make payment arrangements on your cruise. The cruise, Dr. Grace, includes all your food. You can eat all day long if you want. Yes. Uh, 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 your excursions and get, go, out, go out into the islands, and you can do different things. And we're going to do maybe a marriage renewal on one of the private islands and have a lot of fun. Uh, and then you just got the whole cruise in the ship. We're going to do maybe a couple of sessions on the cruise and maybe a, a third one on the island. But we want you all to join us. So we have quite a few couples that have already signed up. Uh, we've met our um, initial deadline, but we can get access to a few more cabins if you're interested. So if you're interested, please go ahead online and register our travel agent can get a few more cabins. So we would love for you to come. I know you're going to have a ball. I know you are, you're, you're, it's going to be great. So Dr. Grace, we're looking for intimacy on the cruise. Yes. Uh, um, and we would love for you all to come. So let's close with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, a day that you have made, a day that we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord, for this time where we were able to share with couples and share uh, 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 with those, Lord, that uh, are interested in strengthening marriage and uh, uh, stabilizing the institution of marriage. So, Lord, I pray for every home. I pray for every family. I pray for every marriage. I pray for every request. Bless us, prosper us. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Thank God. Amen. God bless you all. Tell everybody about My Marriage University. Send people back to our uh, uh, Facebook page and y'all join us for the cruise. Don't miss this marriage retreat. God bless you.